Hello everybody, good day to you. Welcome back. Glad you guys are here. I know I'm super glad to be here. This is a Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo package. Anyway, hey, customer uh, states they just replaced a uh, brake master cylinder. Uh, oh, the alarm's going off. Hang on here. I've done it wrong. Okay. Customer replaced the brake master cylinder and they state that the pedal goes to the floor while braking. So we want to achieve a better brake pedal. Start. Yeah, that does sink down pretty far. It's not terrible. What do we got here on the odometer? It looks like 288,384 miles. How about that? This thing's been around. All right, let's go ahead and get it in the shop. I speculate that there is uh, still some air in the hydraulic braking system. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. Maybe it needs some uh, adjustment out of the drums. We're gonna go find out right about now. So stay tuned because this is gonna be a very good video. Happening Z hood. Let's go ahead and swing this in up front right here. We'll throw it up on the lift, check the brake fluid level. We'll check for leaks. We'll check for rusted lines. We'll check for drum brakes in the rear and, uh, and go from there. I think we're right on the money. A little bit more rip right there is good. Parking the auto. Powering down. And of course we shall pop it. Oh, I can't fit. Pop an easy hood. Ooh, that was a good one. Now it's imperative that we get the brake system functioning properly on this particular Jeep because this thing is on its way uh, north to Tennessee land. Ooh, and it's got the V8. A little steam. That's the big engine. Was that a 4.7 I think they put in these? Was it? No, 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 5.2. 5.2 liters of V8. Not a Hemi. Okay, here's our brake master cylinder. We've got fluid. Not looking that great though. A little bit of light on the subject. Yeah, that's, that's kind of some nasty looking fluid. They said they replaced the master on this once upon a time. It might have been a while. There's some rust and corrosion on it already. Okay. Well, let's cap this back off. We'll set the rack real quick, like lift it up in the air. And uh, we will check the underneath carriage. Again, looking for leaks, which I don't think I'm going to find any. Perhaps it's got drum brakes and they're out of adjustment. Let's go look check that right now and survey says that's a negative those are discs okay here, let's get our lift arm set up right here under the unibody subframe hmm, what's that that's corrosion reclamation okay let's get out of here. lift arm number two kick that guy in and again right here under our unibody frame that's good another Good right here. Yep. And number four. Whoop. Pick that guy in. Is it gonna reach? It sure is. More. There we go. A little bit more. Hang on here. That's all we got, I think. Right there. Again under our uh, under our unibody. Okay, rack is set. Moving on up. And we will do that with our black subscribe button. <laughs> the thing we do here. Friendly reminder, shameless self-promotion. Let's recheck our lift points, looking good on this side. Check in the other side, just to make sure we don't die today, that's good. And the front one there, that one's good. All right, continuing to move on up. Oh look, the vent hood is down. And now that back wall has to come down. And then the front wall has to come down. Lots of construction. Anyway, that is not the task at hand. What we're trying to do is achieve a, uh, a positive feeling brake pedal and a responsive brake pedal with that. All the way up. It's good. On the locks. Now we're safe. Rolly chair time. Here we go. Whee! <laughs> I can't help myself. All right, what's going on down here? I see no fluid. Brake lines look okay. Hmm, got an axle seal leak. 
See that right there? But again, brake lines look okay. That does not look okay. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to get these bleeders open. Okay. Na, 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 na. Moving on up. So we've got, this isn't right. This should not be pointed down like that. I don't think that's right. I think these are upside down. The calipers look like those are okay, but these lines, that's not, uh, not the greatest. Same thing with that one. That bend should not be there. So these things are upside down. Hmm, might need to fix that. Okay, pinion seal leak in the front diff. Not a huge deal. Okay. Let's see what else is going on here. All right, so what we need to do, I need to fix these lines. I basically need to unbolt them, uh, flip this manifold thing over, and then bolt them back on. So that's not a huge issue. But I, I do not believe that those go on with this thing pointed down. That's that's not going to work. Okay, so we need to fix that and probably uh, do a fluid exchange with the pressure bleeder just to uh, pass all that old fluid through and uh, make sure there's no air in the system. I imagine that, that uh, there's air on the rear side of this system because I don't think these have uh, been opened up and bled for quite some time. Actually, let's uh, let's put a 10 millimeter, 3 8 that's gonna be 3 8 Let's put a wrench on these and see if I can't crack them open to get some fluid flow. If I can't get fluid flow, I'm probably gonna have to put calipers on it just to uh, just to be able to bleed the air out of the system. Okay, let's start with that. And we need a 3 8 wrench. 3 8 3 8 3 8 That one, sure thing. 3 8 it is. Let's see here. Let's get our wrench on there. And, okay, turned. Are we gonna get some fluid? Yep, all right, that's good. Definitely a good sign. Click. Let's check our other side real quick. Get rid of that thing. And let's get a good bite on it. We don't want it to slip. On your click. And show me the fluid. There we go, that's good. All right, so fluid can flow. That's just fine. Let's go ahead and pull these front wheels off and we'll get those lines detached and flipped at the calipers. I ended up busting out the 19.5 millimeter socket because these are chrome capped acorn lug nuts and they swell up and then you can't get the, uh, your 19 mil on top of them. See that? See how it's all kind of kind of swollen, misshapen, a little bit worn out. If I uh, stuck a 19 on there, the lug nuts wouldn't want to come out. So I've got the 19.5. I also have this set. It's a flip socket set. You can go either direction. It's a 19.5, 18.5, 17.5, and a 21.5. That one's stuck. Become unstuck. There we go. Yeah, look at that. Crusty. All right, wheel, you're coming with me. Whoa, it's heavy. Heavier than I thought. So what we'll do, let's go ahead and turn this. Yeah, look at that, that's, that's not okay. It's not gonna work. So what I'll do here is unbolt the, uh, the banjo bolt right there and just flip this line upside down. Get some light on the subject. Okay, let's do this with some haste. Filling a bunch of fluid. Unclick. And yep, it's making a mess. No worries. It's all gonna get flushed and bled anyway. Let's flip that over. Hang on. That's how it goes. Just like that. Now we're cooking. Begin forward clicks now. There we go. Billion times better. Perfect. 
All right, let's go over to the other side and flip that one over, and then we can try to do the uh, a bleed procedure on this uh, on this Jeep. Yeah, I'm gonna need this cap though. It's not gonna work for me. Okay. Actually, you know what? While we're here, let's make sure this one's gonna come loose. Come on, get on there. Are you gonna bleed? Might take a minute as I spilled a bunch of fluid out of this hose here. Begin bleeding now. I'll wait. I don't know if everybody else is gonna wait, but I'll wait. Let's find out here. A few moments later. Hmm. Okay, we're not getting fluid yet. Let's uh let's just circle back to this later. Let's go flip that other hose real quick. Okay, wheels off the other side. Now that thing spilled a little bit more fluid than I thought it would in the time that I figured that we had. So what I'll do, what I'll do over here is we're gonna clamp off this line right here. That way it can't just dump fluid everywhere. Uh, I believe the majority of it actually came out of the caliper, but couldn't hurt. I mean, I'm gonna flush it all out anyway with the pressure machine. You know, I almost wonder if these hoses aren't even uh, specific for this Jeep. I don't know. Maybe they are. Maybe they're not. Yeah, that's nice clean fluid that came out of that one. Let's see. Oh, hit you guys with a with my tool again. Let's pull this guy out. See if I go like this, it puts a a bend in the hose. It kind of kinks the hose a little bit. So I'm figuring flipping it around is probably the best option. Hmm, this one kind of wants to run into the bleeder though. Maybe I can bend it. I think I'll bend it. Or what if it goes like this? Yeah, that's how it goes. Look at that, I, had, I got the other side wrong. It doesn't go vertically, it goes, it goes like this. That's the, the best way to make it fit, okay. So I'm off 90 degrees on my driver's side. We'll try that again in a moment. Let's tighten this guy up. Oops. That's how it goes. Okay, now we know. Let me go back over to the driver's side and, and readjust that one. Then we'll go ahead and initiate the bleed. Okay, driver's side once more. Redo again, unclickage. Thank you. Where's my bolt? My washer, there it is. So if we're doing it, let's see how we're gonna do this here. Mm, I don't know if this one's gonna fit that way. Hmm. Is that thing bent? I mean, it fits like that, but the other side has this thing going, like sticking out like this in this direction. Uh, judgment call, judgment call. I think I wanna do it. I don't know how I wanna do this. Meanwhile, I'm dumping uh, oil everywhere. I think I want it, see that it's kinda twisted, it doesn't, like the way I had it is the best way that it seemed to want to fit, but then it interferes with the bolt here. So I don't know. I think what I'm gonna do is put it how I think it goes, and then I'm just gonna bend this slightly for relief. I think that's how we're gonna do this. Let's try this. Yeah, that's, that's a little better. Clicks. Let's try, let's go in with the angry flyers here. That'll give me a good bite without possible damage or minimal damage or no damage. We'll just put a bit of a turn in it. That's better. I believe that's how it's gonna go. That's how it's supposed to be. 
and that's the same as the other side. The hose is away from the shock, where the way I had it just now, the hose was actually really close to that shock absorber and that wasn't cool either. So I think right here is good, that's better. Okay, let's get back out of here again. We'll move this tire out of the way so I can let the, the rack down. We're gonna let the car down and I'm gonna bust out the uh, brake fluid exchange machine. Let's get rid of this too. We'll hook the machine up to it and we're gonna pressure bleed this unit. Come down, Jeep all the way down. There we go. Looking good, we have clearance, good shape. Let's go fetch the brake fluid machine, the VG PF7 unit. It is a pressure bleeder and a vacuum bleeder. It's got a vacuum pump on one side and then a pressure vessel on the other side. What I'm going to do is connect the, oh, locked up brakes. I'm gonna connect the pressure vessel to the top of the master cylinder. We're gonna apply some pressure to the brake system. Then I'm gonna connect the vacuum side to each individual caliper open the bleeders and pressure is going to feed fluid in and vacuum is going to suck fluid out and we're going to go ahead and do a complete exchange on all of the fluid inside of the system. Sound like fun? I think so. I think that's my adapter. Three little hooks and three, three tabs and three tabs. Hook this guy up to one side. This, I don't know why there's two, two caps on this because the chambers in here are connected. I believe they're I believe they're connected. I don't think that they're separate. If they are, then I'll do two fluid exchanges. Actually, redo. Let's just test that theory out right now and see if these are separate chambers or if they are uh, one single chamber. Hmm, those are empty. Hmm, spare brake fluid. We'll use this as our top off. And then I'll use the, uh, the BG stuff as the flush fluid. Fluid exchange, I don't like to say flush. We flush toilets. So what I'll do is I'm gonna fill this back chamber up and if the level rises in the front chamber, then we know that they're connected. And if it does not, then they are not connected. And the survey says fluid level is rising. They appear to just be connected at the top. So yeah, let's just go ahead and fill these both all the way up. We can suction it down to the proper level uh, later. That's good. Put that back on right there. Put that back on. And our little adapter thing here. Click. So what I need here is my pressure line. Put this guy right here. We will connect this to the reservoir. Valve closed. And let's go ahead and, oh, we're already full. It's prepared for the next service. All right. Let's go fetch the, air, the airline, hook the air supply up to it, and then we'll get the process started. Compressor on. I haven't needed it today, saving electrons. Now, ordinarily, we would start with the wheels that are farthest away from the master cylinder. But since I broke into the system right there, and I know that there's air inside of those calipers, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the fronts, and we'll just do the rears later on. If I have to, we'll bounce off the rears and move back to the front to do the purge, but I don't think I, I will. So we'll see. Let's plug this guy in. There we go, that's our pressure side. And I'm gonna set pressure kinda low because it's got that other cap on it and I don't wanna blow that cap off. So we're gonna dump this down to, let's do like 12 pounds. There we go. All right. So we fire up the pump. That's suction on our suction side. There it is. We'll bring this hose back around on the inside here. We'll connect it to the spring. We'll connect it to our bleeder valve right here. Like so. And 3 8 wrench. Crack this guy open. And begin opening. Oh, it's tighter than I thought it was. Oh, there. guys open plug it back in and let's let some fluid flow oh we're leaking wrong adapter hang on hang on hang on powering down that's uh, not the correct adapter 
there's two of these that are very similar. And I don't have, the one I had is the small one. That mm. makes this, uh, this Jeep a different color. I wonder if I can adjust this. Here, maybe I can switch these over to the other side. Let's try that. It's making a mess. Feels pretty good. Try again. Give it some pressure. Please don't leak. Please don't leak. Please don't leak. It's not leaking. Okay. Vacuum pump back on. Let's see if we've got fluid flow here. Get some light on the subject. Yes, we do. Fluid is flowing. Very good. All right, let's just let this thing toot for a little while. We're going to run about a half a port through this one. We'll do a half a port through the other one. And then likewise with the two, uh, the two rears. And we are leaking again. Let's turn the pressure down. I don't know if it's leaking from this cap or from this one. That's a little better, it stopped. Okay, not cool. All right, we've had uh, about a quarter quart go through this, half a quart, 33% of a quart, somewhere in there. Let's go ahead and lock off this valve. Close it up. Disconnect our suction side, drop the wrench. It's messy in here. And we're gonna crack this valve open just once just to make sure that there's no uh, no residual air in the system. That's all coming out from the pressure side. Yeah, we're good there. Nice clean fluid. Let's go ahead and lock it up. And we'll move over to the, uh, the right front. We can leave the pump going, we can leave the vacuum going. We leave the pressure in, we just have to coat the hose over there and hook it up. Moving on over. Okay, let's hang the hose. And we'll crack our line open. You hear me, line? Open. Uh-oh. I have no flow. It's not okay. Oh, there it is. Found it. We'll let that run through for a little while and then close it up and we'll move out back. Let's go check our fluid res level words in the reservoir. Okay, so our first run we went from here, second run, we'll go all the way down to the second run then we'll refill this. So I've concluded that the fluid is leaking out of the other cap right here because it's not leaking out of that guy. I've already wiped it down once and it started to pool up like right here. I think it's just pushing its way out of the cap because this vessel right here is in fact pressurized. Uh, no big deal, I just got some hosing off to do when I'm done. Okay, we're getting down to the mark with our fluid level. Let's go ahead and close our valve off over here. And we'll check it for, I lost my wrench. Oh no, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. There it is. Can't let the thing run dry. If it runs dry, it'll start to pump air into it. And that's not what we want to do. Let's tighten this guy back up. Am I going the right way? Yep. Little fix. Pull the hose. And let's just crack it open. Purge out a little bit more fluid. Yep, there we go. It's running out. No bubbles, no air. Good to go. Valve pickages. Let's go out back after we refill the machine. One more. One more quart of fluid. There we go. We have to dump all the pressure before we open up this vessel. Otherwise, it'll shoot all the fluid out like a geyser, and that would be bad. Back to the cabinet with us. I need another brake fluid bottle. Where are they? Right there, hiding out. Got it. Ultra dry. It's formulated. It's an ultra dry liquid. Who'd have thought? 
poke it, pry bar, pry bar poking. There we go. Let's refill this guy right now. Pouring things, long range. Nope. Still pouring, 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 pouring. And no, I'm not going to use a funnel because that could contaminate the fluid even if I clean it with great clean. Okay, that's about full. There's like a half ounce left in there. I'll save that in case I need to top off the master cylinder. Ooh. Put our cap back on. Air pressure powering back up. Right about there, that's good. Okay, let's go out back and bleed the rear. Come on, vacuum line. Coming with me. Let's see here. We're just gonna lay down and crawl under. Here, we'll hang the we'll hang the hose over here on the spring. It's always a good spot. Break this guy open again. Here we go. We've got flow. That vacuum on there. Whoop. Lost it. Perfect. And since that was barely open, we can crack it open a little bit more with the open end right here. There we go. All right. Let's go back, watch the reservoir, let the fluid level come down some, and then we'll switch over to the left rear. How are we looking? Right about here. How's our leaking? Minimal leaking. Okay. So the compressor came on because we're using air pressure for the vacuum. And while that other wheel's going, I'm going to go ahead and toss these front wheels back on. Just to be efficient. We'll get these guys bolted on and then as soon as we're done, we can pull this thing out and go for a test drive. This one should get you guys going. We've got a torque stick on an electric gun with an extension and a flip socket. What do you guys think about that? Yeah. Three, you can't do that. It's not gonna torque properly. Eh, maybe. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Click. One wheel, good to go. Okay, wheel number two is on. We're just about at the halfway point. Let's go out back, close that right rear valve, switch it over to the left rear, and then uh, we'll see how our brake pedal feels. Ah, rolling around in the dirt. Let's tighten this guy up. Pull the hose off, disconnected, purge. Nice, that's good clean fluid. Finalize, click, right there, and off to the left rear we go. Swing this guy on over. Right oh, by the way, this is not brake fluid water. This is uh, leftover from an explosion, a coolant system explosion on a Volkswagen. It was quite violent. We'll hang that guy. Plug our hose in, get on there please, all the way, yeah. and let it ride. Fluid's flowing, see that? Very good. And again, I'll just monitor that, uh, that tank right there until it's about empty. Once it's done, it's done, and then we can go hose this thing off and the floor because that spillage is from me. That's from this master cylinder overflowing. Yeah, we're still going. A little less than halfway. Oh, how's the old thing looking? That's nasty. All righty, uh, our reservoir is nearly empty. Let's go ahead and close this guy off. Disconnect that. Let it suck out all the fluid. Let's check it for some air. Negative, no air. 
I know what you're thinking, how can there be air when you're running fluid through it? Because there could still be air in the system and I just want to make sure. I feel better doing it that way, so that's why I do that. Let's get out of here and shut our machine down. Now this next, uh, next step here is kind of critical. We drop the flashlight every time. Gravity, flashlight gravity. The next step is very critical. Uh, what we need to do before disconnecting this line right here is to purge the air pressure. Stay. If we don't purge the air pressure, when we disconnect the line, it's gonna spew like a volcano and dump fluid everywhere. That would be bad. There we are. Now we can close that off. Disconnect slowly. Good. Let's recover our adapter. Hey, and look at that. The fluid level in there, or fluid quality condition is squeaky clean. That's beautiful. But we're a little overfilled, so we need to vacuum that, that stuff out. No worries. Let's come on over, reconnect our vacuum, or our air pressure rather. Vacuum back on. And we'll just use the suction hose. Pull this level down and set it to the max. We don't want to leave it overfilled because then next time somebody does a brake job and they compress the, the pistons and the calipers, it'll displace all the fluid and then overflow this master cylinder again. And uh, we don't want to do that. If you go right there. Powering down. Let's put our caps back on. Very good. Let's go let this thing down, clear the rack. We're gonna back it out, hose it off, and then we'll go out, test drive it, hit the road. Lock release, Jeep coming down. All the way down. Like all the way, all the way down. Not just mostly. Come on, come on, hurry up. Maybe if I stand on it, we'll go faster. Probably not. Give me that. Clear. Clar. Clear again, and good to go. Okay, let's climb on in here real quick like restarting the engine start ha 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 it's alive good let's back her on out reverse kind of got a brake pedal backing up backing up beep 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 Hello, fan. Better watch out, there's another Jeep behind me. I don't want to hit it. That would also be bad. All right, right about here is good. Parking is the auto. And shiny. Let's get rid of all that old fluid. We don't want that in here. Wash me down. And I'll get all the fluid on the calipers. We're just gonna give it the, the hosing reach around treatment here. Bottom of the car, bottom of the chassis, anything that could have gotten fluid on it, we're gonna spray that off. Caliper on this side, let's spray that off. See, we got it. I can't see, but you can. And same thing back here on the rear. It's not gonna reach. Hang on, I know what to do. We'll put it on a jet. We'll go long range. Yeah, yeah. Long range shiny. 
Yeah, my hose isn't that long. It does not reach. Let's get this other side, left rear. Fire. That's good. All right, let's hit the road. See how this pedal feels. See you later, 5.2 liter. Now, because I potentially could contaminate the carpet with my watery shoes and or dirt, we'll throw this uh, floor mat in here. I probably should have done that to begin with, but I didn't realize I was gonna be swimming in brake fluid and, uh, and water and whatnot. So I changed my mind last minute. I can do that. All right, looking good. That'll feels pretty good. But we won't know until we, uh, we're out on the road here. Can I go? Yep, sure can. Okay, straight line. Let's apply some pedal. Okay, feels good. It didn't pull off the road or anything crazy like that. I definitely think it could use some front end parts. It's, it's real loose in the steering. And that axle seal. There's a couple things to let them know about, but what we wanted to do was uh, make sure the brakes were good. We had a sinking pedal. It was uh, all the way at the floor while driving, and it, now it is not. It feels pretty good. It's stable. I can't press it down all the way, and that's also good. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this one a success with a hidden bonus. And that bonus was those uh, incorrectly installed brake lines. So glad we got that thing squared away. So uh, I guess at this point, there's really nothing more for me to do except to thank you guys for watching this video. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please feel free to let me know about that by tapping that like button down below. If you did not enjoy this video, then uh, let me know what you did not enjoy about it in the comment section down below. And then I can use your feedback to uh, create better videos moving forward into the future. So again, as always, thank you guys for watching. And most importantly, do not forget to have yourself a great day. See you guys later. End of Jeep. Parking the auto. Powering down. Pew. Goodbye, Grand Cherokee.